Sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce you, Giulio Pistorium. So as um, Professor Angelella said, uh, Giulio did his bachelor in biology in, uh, at the University of Catania, and now he's currently doing his master's degree at the University of Trieste. And during the past years, he has also entered the course in experimental sciences at the Scuola Normale uh, di Catania. And this is why we are here today to discuss his um, thesis. Um, so he joined my lab um, almost a, in, in October, so uh, many months ago now, and he was brave enough to join a newly established lab. And I, I think it's worth mentioning it because when you establish a lab, there is nothing set up uh, in the lab. So he was very determined and productive and also very capable to help us to set up a lot of experiments and experimental setup. And also he's been showing um, himself to be very independent. Uh, so regarding the thesis, uh, he chose um, independently the topic. Of course, is, this topic was aligned with our uh, research interests in the lab. So he was independent in selecting the bibliography that he needed to write the thesis, and he wrote the thesis himself. So I'm very um, happy about his work with this thesis. So this thesis uh, that is entitled um, Astrocytes to the Animal Kingdom, I think uh, this is a very important topic because uh, we know very little about astrocytes through evolution. And I think it was able to convey a lot of um, different information that it was able to collect across um, a huge amount of literature uh, that has uh, been done over the past uh, years on this um, topic. So I'm very happy now to um, listen to his uh, presentation. I hope you enjoy uh, this work as much as I did. Go ahead, Julio. Thanks, thanks, Carmen and Professor Falcone for the uh, kind present introduction. So I would like to, okay, is it shared? Okay, okay. Morning, everyone. I will. Uh, so, as you may read from this uh, 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 this title, I would like to talk uh, about the Hass Society through this animal kingdom. So, but. First of all, what are astrocytes? So, as you may know, the brain has been compared uh, to the most complex uh, object in the universe due to the fact that it has uh, 86 billion of neurons and, uh, the, and uh, uh, each of which uh, has the possibility to do up to 10,000 synapses. However, are these cells and this uh, um, complexity enough? In reality, not. There is the same amount of cells that are known as non-neuronal cells. Inside of them, there are glial cells, and glial cells means glue. So the first role of them was to support the neuronal cells. Inside of them, okay, there is a group of uh, cells known as astrocyte. Astrocyte because of these peculiar shapes similar to the stars. Their function are uh, so many, and the first one are uh, the first one is related to the maintenance of the homeostasis from the molecular point of view, organ homeostasis and systemic homeostasis. So maintain the well function of neuronal network, coordinating them maintain the synapse, allowing the formation, and so on and so forth, as well as the metabolic support and the feeding mechanism. But this astrocyte has originated from uh, the, uh, with the appearance of the nervous system in a parallel process. So first of all, uh, in the single cell organisms, there were all the building blocks to form the nervous system. Then, with the uh, metazone evolution, starting more or less 650 million years ago, there was the appearance of this first type of nervous system that is uh, a, um, it has a pivotal role into the life of animals, as well as is a peculiarity of the animal kingdom. So, with the neural network formation, more or less in the late Diacaran period, there was the formation of two different types of nervous system. The first one, probably the ancient, the diffuse nervous system, in which uh, all neurons are tied together to form a huge network, uh, and, uh, it, and these networks uh, were semi-independent. However, this 
nuclei, these cells, the soma, start to collect and organize in um, complex structure known as ganglia. And this process is reiterated over time. So lots of ganglia start to group together to form a cephalon, so a brain. And this process is known as, as the cephalization or centralization process that has led to the central nervous system. In parallel to this, for, uh, to this process, there is the appearance and the request for a major support for the neural cells because they have been specialized into the communication, fast and electrical communication. So all the other functions have related to other cells known as glial cells and in particular the astrocyte. So I would like to uh, give some example about this evolution of astrocyte starting from one of the ancient, uh, very ancient group, so the nematodes. There, the first and probably the most known organism is the C. elegans. This is a roundworm, well studied because we know all the cells that made the, uh, their uh, nervous system that are more or less 300 uh, nerve cells and 56 glial cells. These glial cells or glial-like cells have a supportive role and allow the formation of the centralized nervous system as well as the sensory organism pivotal for the um, collecting information from the outside world known as sensilia. So the first thing is the nerve ring that is located into the frontal portion uh, where uh, there is uh, there are lots of cephalic sheet cells uh, known as this protos astrocyte because they resemble both for the shape and the function the astrocyte and the mammalian astrocyte. Then we have the glial -like cells of the nerve ring known as GLR cells uh, that are beneath the uh, the nerve ring and have a peculiar um, arrangement. These cells are in between nerve cells and muscle cells connected via this gap junction to allow a better organization and a better refinement of the movement for the feeding. And then you have socket cell and sheet cells important for the sensorial organs because they guide the formation and the adaptation of this sensilia. Regarding the function, well, in this case, uh, they are only related to the high homeostasis is like the potassium buffer and the neurotransmitter catabolism. They are important for the development of the sensilia, as said before, and they share similar pathway in terms of development and the gene expressed during this development to the mammalian astrocyte. So these genes are HLH17 and LIN26. A further com uh, complexity has arisen into the anelida filum where the astrocyte, in this case known as homeostatic proto-astrocyte, uh, proto has uh, uh, the homeostatic function and inside these specific, uh, um, the specific organs, uh, the specific organism, there are lots of ganglia cells in, in uh, uh, which there are at least 10 types, uh, 10 uh, glial cells known as giant glial cells that are here inside the neuropil. Then we have the pocket cells that cover neuronal cell bodies, and then the connective glial cells that are typical and similar to the oligodendrocyte function, that is sheet axon. In terms of function, because of the homeostatic protoastrocyte are specifically related to homeostasis, they regulate the pH level, the neurotransmitter uptake and catabolism. In addition, they sense the neural activity, similar to uh, with the um, the calcium activity that is uh, uh, similar to the nematode one, in which they show a physiology that is in between neuronal and astrocyte due to the fact that they use uh, calcium, uh, the influx of calcium is driven by uh, calcium voltage gated channels more than calcium stores. Then we have the potassium buffer and also the homeostatic support for all their structure. A further complication and specialization of of glial cells we can, uh, is found also in arthropod, where uh, there are eight types of glial cells, like transport glial, subperineural cells, these cells that form the glial limitants and the hemolymph uh, brain barrier. 
So we have then the cell body glier, satellite glier, axon lock glier. Glier glide that is a peculiarity in these cells, in these organisms, because of these cells are able to form connection with other glier cells only. Then we have neuropil glier, tracheal glier, and tract glier. Their functions are so many. First of all, there is a definition of glial limitants, so to form a sort of shed, uh, shield that surround and define the brain organism, uh, organ. Then we have the emolymph brain barrier that uh, start to uh, resemble the blunt brain barrier, despite the fact that they have an open, um, an open system. So they use the emolymph. There is the regulation of potassium, neuropene homeostasis, synaptogenesis also in this case. Synaptic transmission regulation, regulation of neuronal activity and their survival. In addition to them, uh, there is the, um, the lack of microglia. So to overcome this problem, they are involved in the axonal pruning during development and they clear axonal debris. And in addition, they do the trophic support. Also, they show a gliosis and the phagocyt uh, uh, phagocytic capability, and then they regulate the neurogenesis uh, inside this organism, because uh, inside the neurogenic niche, the uh, specific subtype of, uh, of protoastrocytes are able to uh, convey information both uh, via the cap junction, so direct information, or several other uh, signaling from outside. Then we move on to the deuterostome where we can find in first for the first time in echinoderm the, type, the radial glial cells. These types, uh, this type of cells are a peculiarity uh, of this group and we can find them also in the decordata. These cells are a new epithelial type that, uh, that has this morphology, this peculiar morphology with unipolar, so uh, with single process or bipolar two process and despite this morphology is quite similar uh, and simple throughout uh, the entire nervous system they, uh, they show uh, the peculiarity that resemble the radial glial cells that we have into the vertebrate like the cytoplasmic filaments in this case is an unknown type of filament but resemble the gfap filament that is a, a typical marker for astrocyte and uh, uh, noteworthy is the fact that they have uh, a glial to neural ratio that is very high for these animals, uh, no, uh, having from 45 to 70% of uh, glial cells as the nervous mass. So disentangle completely the possible relation to glial to neural ratio and uh, the complex end uh, of the brain. Their function. Uh, are related to the secretion of glycoprotein known as the Reisner substance. This is the same substance that we can find also into the development of the uh, during the in the vertebrate development. Then there, are, uh, there is a spatial restricted neurogenesis. These cells are able to generate new neurons, new radial glial cells, uh, and uh, they do this uh, all over the lifespan. First of all, to replace previous neurons that have been uh, died or uh, to continuously grow their, their body. In addition to the uh, um, uh, after an injury where they start to re uh, reconstruct entirely their piece, the lost piece. So, so they are also involved into the clearance of cell debris after this injury. Finally, we move to vertebrates. So, and the first type of vertebrate was the fish. In this case, the information are most of the time related to the zebrafish. This is an animal model well known where we can find the main three type of astrocyte as macroglia, ependymal glial cells, radial glial cells, and associate like glial cells. The radial glial cells are the most abundant into the adult brain. And then we have also oligodendrocyte. These radial glial cells uh, are uh, um, arranged in a spoke-like manner, and they show a physiological calcium transient uh, that try to uh, that resemble the mouse astrocyte in terms of kinetic, in addition to the feature. For the amphibians, however, we don't have so many information, and they are only related to the anura group. 
where uh, we can find ependymal cells uh, as the uh, well represented that are connected in a network uh, in a scarce glial network and also there are radioglial cells with thicker process that contact blood vessels and not so many associate like cells then in reptile uh, we have a um, very change in terms of associate they are a key uh, group uh, in the evolution because of uh, in the forebrain there are unipolar ependymal cells, bipolar radical cell, as stellate astrocyte. So for the first time there is the appearance of an astrocyte like glial cells. With eye level, uh, these animals show an eye level of neuronal regeneration. This is why they are so important because they can try to, to uh, activate this regeneration. They are their astrocytes are less active than mammalian one in terms of reactivation, and they show a similarity in terms of RNA expression level to uh, a, a 18 rats astrocytes. So they show an immature phenotype compared to the astrocyte uh, of the rats. Inside this group, there are a lot of order. And the first one, probably the ancient one, is the studio, so in which the tortoise are there. They show an homogeneous distribution of radioglial cells, which are GFAP positive. And you can see these uh, in these images. Then we have the squamata organ uh, organism, where due to the fact that they can uh, collect from snakes to lizards, they have a different astrocyte architecture and also the morphology. There, with harcosaurs uh, in which crocodile are, there is different the ependymal glia, radioglial cells uh, that are predominant, but also the presence of stellate astrocytes are so important, and for the first time, the appearance of a specific type of astrocyte in the cerebellum that resemble the Bergman glial cells, typical of birds and mammals. Speaking of which, in birds, we have a huge complex brain with lots of neurons uh, that can reach 3 million, uh, but the, the glia to neuro ratio is quite low, so from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. It is lower compared to the mammalian one. They show the first for the first time protoplasmic and fibrous astrocytes that are connected into the uh, into a huge network, uh, and they are region. They show a region-dependent morphology as well as radical cells that are typical for the vertebrate. The astrocytes are able to cover several synapses and show perivascular and fit re uh, resembly lots of the mammalian one. And they have a role also in synaptogenesis and synapse regulation as any other uh, astrocytes. Finally, we reach the mammals, where we can find in the monotremes the platypus, uh, in which the astrocyte morphology is a little bit in between the, the, the uh, oligodendrocyte and astrocytes. So not a well-defined shape. Then in marsupial, in like the opossum, there is a lack of appendical uh, cells with their, these uh, processes from the ventricular surface. Their processes end on blood vessels, neuronal neurites, cell bodies, and also other astrocytes. So with very thin processes that try to resemble them, the um, placental astrocyte. And in neocortex, despite the low density of astrocytes compared to the archaeopallium, all these astrocytes are inside the layer of this neocortex. Going on to the placental, we can see from this graph uh, the glial to neural ratio, and this uh, is real variable from 0 0.3 in rodents to 8 in whales. And as you can see, human are just a little bit in between. This is not a straight line, so there isn't any correlation between this value and the brain size. Not worthy, the ferret visual cortex don't show any tiny model for astrocyte because they are so, so much overlapped that they cannot fit. Them. And then, as previously mentioned, inside the cerebellum, there is a, Berman, uh, a specific subtype of astrocyte known as the Bergman glial cells. For, uh, uh, for the similarity with neurons, uh, uh, these uh, uh, type of cells associate are an heterogeneous population in terms of function, in terms of molecules, in terms of morphology. So with lots of criteria, you can find several types of, uh, of associate population. 
For the placental mammals, uh, in specific uh, with hum as humans uh, and non-human uh, primates, there are two types of cells uh, that are interlaminar acids and varicose projection astrocytes that are peculiar to us, even if interlaminar astrocytes are not so, um, are not so um, related to us and non-human primates, because interlaminar astrocytes that are in the layer one, in the first layer, have been found also in other mammals. And uh, uh, they have an inverse pyramidal morphology with this interlaminar uh, process that run through uh, the cortex deep down. And if uh, um, they are rudimentary interlaminar astrocytes, they reach only the layer one instead of for the typical interlaminar astrocytes, they can reach up to the fourth layer as in human. Then we have these varicose projection astrocytes that are located from the layer 5 to the white matter. They don't form associative domain similar to the uh, interlaminar astrocytes because they disrupt this type of model because of these long processes, 1 to 5, which can show some bits regularly spaced along this process. And this is why they are known as varicose projection astrocytes. When these, pro these bits are there, also in the interlaminar astrocyte, in the long interlaminar process, uh, these bits appear. And these structures are related to the protein uh, degradation pathway, as well as the activation of the salt free pathway. Then, to summarize uh, a little bit about the mammalian evolution, I just put some number here to compare the human protoplasmic astrocyte and rodent protoplasmic astrocyte. In this case, as you can see, the, um, the human astrocyte show 10 times more primary process than the rodents. They have a uh, three times the associative domain in, ter in terms of uh, linear dimension, but also volume that is quite larger. And thanks to this capability, they are able to cover 2 million synapses compared to 10, 20 to 120,000 uh, 120, synapses. This means that the astrocytes have been evolved so much in the mammals and throughout the, uh, throughout the animals that probably are the pivotal, uh, they have a pivotal role into the development and the evolution of the brain more than neurons where they, um, they show an increase in the dimension it is more or less 1.5 times the human neurons compared to the rodents and with the same more or less number of branches and synapses. So this means that astrocytes are probably the way to characterize this evolution. So with that said, I would like to conclude and thank you all, uh, thank you all for the attention. Specifically, uh, I would like to thank uh, my uh, professor Sorry, uh, Professor Falcone and Falcone Lab. As well as the uh, Scuola Superiore community and my group. Thanks.